Good morning and welcome to Unity of Hagerstown celebration service this first Sunday of Advent. Our opening quote is, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. I invite you to join me in our affirmation. Together, each step of my journey, I affirm unwavering faith in divine order. Now, if you didn't get the PDF in this week's email, we're gonna say it again. Together, each step of my journey, I affirm unwavering faith in divine order. We begin our service with an opening prayer. Ah, let's just take a nice deep breath and allow all the worries, all the concerns, all the busyness to melt away as we go within, making that 12 inch step trip rather from our head to our hearts. And we continue in the spirit of thanksgiving by giving thanks for this beautiful day for coming together in community, even if it's virtual. We give thanks for that spirit of faith within us. And we give thanks for this unity community. We open our hearts, our minds to what we need to learn to grow in faith. Amen. And now we have an opening song. You may have noticed Brent and Patty beside me. <laughs> and they're going to lead us in some Christmas music. Deck the halls with bells of holly. Ba -da 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 -da. It's so much fun hearing Christmas music again. Thank you guys for that lovely opening. We have the reading of uh, for our first Sunday in Advent. This is coming from Unity's publication, The Spirit of Christmas. And you may have received one in the mail. If not, you can go to Unity Org, and um, I think it's probably going to be under the shop button. Most Christians focus on hope during the first week of Advent. In unity, perhaps inspired by the view that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, we contemplate both hope and faith as we spiritually prepare our hearts and minds for Christmas. In The Revealing Word, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore makes this distinction. Hope is the expectation of good in the future. It is subject to time. Faith is the certain knowledge that our good is ours right now. It goes beyond time and space. Think of it as a hope-faith continuum. Hope arises when we glimpse a new possibility. These glimpses can inspire us to make positive changes. They can motivate us to adopt new ways of thinking and behaving. That said, Hope tends to be burdened by a desire for reality to be different than it is. I hope Santa brings me the ultimate Buzz Lightyear, <laughs> may mask a belief that I don't have all I need. I hope I don't get sick 
is tinged with doubt in my body's natural state of health and wholeness. Increase your hope on this continuum and enter the realm of belief. We believe because we have an intellectual understanding of how a thing works. We may also believe because it's what we've been taught. The challenge is that it's possible to have two contradictory beliefs concurrently. For instance, I believe in an abundant universe. Yet sometimes, if funds are low, the anxiety I feel betrays a residual belief in lack. Resolving these contradictions is the domain of faith. It's in the spiritual dimension that we experience faith as a deep inner knowing arising from divine intelligence. It's the kind of knowing Peter demonstrates when Jesus asks the disciple, who do you say that I am? Today, Peter's response makes perfect sense to us. But then when Jesus was perceived as an insurgent fraternizing with the deplorables and provoking authorities to say he was Messiah, the son of the living God, was a totally irrational answer, not discerned by any human standard. It was revealed through spiritual knowing, through faith. Let me light this candle for faith. Blessed are we, for each of us has access to hope, belief, and faith in the Christmas story's promise of infinite good and love everlasting. And we have another affirmation for this Advent Sunday. Together, I look for the many ways the good I seek is already mine. And again, I look for the many ways the good I seek is already mine. And our song for this Advent reading. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and with your captive children dwell. Give comfort to all exiles here and to the aching heart bid cheer. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come within as faith to dwell. and Patty. Ah, oh, wow, that just went straight to my heart. Shall come as faith to dwell within each of us. Absolutely. <clears throat> Shifting gears just a tad, <laughs> we're going to move into some announcements. On Tuesday is the International Day of Giving, Giving Tuesday, to support the nonprofits that you'd like to see uh, blossom. So if you'd like to uh, see this ministry continue to prosper, I invite you to go to PayPal, go to unityhagerstown.org, hit the donate button, and send a little bit extra above your tithe and offering. And we appreciate it so very much. Our annual congregational meeting is coming up next week. Immediately after the service, you'll be given a Zoom link in the um, email newsletter that goes out on Wednesday. And our Course in Miracles is still continuing to meet on Zoom at 6.30 on Wednesdays. And we're looking for bell ringers. Now, this is a highly acquired skill. You have to be cheerful. You have to say Merry Christmas about 100 times. And all the time, you're ringing a bell for the Salvation Army. I did it uh, Friday and Saturday, and it was so much fun. Even the people who refused to <laughs> meet my eye, it was still, it was like, oh, I'm just sending out love to you, lady. <laughs> you know? It was great fun. So I encourage you to contact me if you'd like to take an hour shift. Um, it's three to five, so you could go three to four or four to five, or do both hours, Fridays and Saturdays throughout Advent at Hobby Lobby. 
there's the sun shining in on you, you're protected with, um, uh, in case it rains, and they provide masks, uh, gloves, aprons, and of course the bell. So consider doing that. As uh, in years past, we have given the residents to Holly Place a Christmas stocking. And this year it's gonna look a little different. Instead of bringing things into the church, if you would like to support this endeavor, I encourage you to send a financial amount to Unity of Hagerstown and mark it for Holly Place stockings. Uh, these, if you're not familiar with Holly Place, these residents really have nowhere else to go. And uh, um, the stockings are something that they have come to just anticipate every year, filled with goodies from Unity of Hagerstown. And then we have finally come together to get a cookbook of all the delicious potluck recipes. Oh, man, my mouth is just watering thinking about it. If you brought in a dish for a potluck and it got rave reviews, which I, all of them do, I, I invite you to send your recipe to Safi and the email address is on the um, announcements here and it will also be in the email newsletter. Additionally, just, just a few things just to upcoming to keep a heads up on. 1221 at 4 p.m. we're going to have a winter solstice bonfire at Ann Baker's house providing the weather cooperates. Ann is also going to be leading us in a solstice service there. We're going to do it uh, physically distant around the uh, fire and of course if you're more comfortable wearing a mask I encourage you to do so. Then on the 24th we're going to have an angel remembrance service. This is a combination candlelight 12 power service and also a way to honor those who have passed um, and those we may be missing this time of year. It's also a way to honor our grief for this past year. Um, it's, this has certainly been a year of change and challenge, some might say, and we may be missing our families since we can't really uh, see everybody. There's probably going to be restrictions on travel again like there was for Thanksgiving. So this, this will be a Facebook Live event. And I, I don't have a time yet because it's dependent on St. Mark's, but it will be on uh, Christmas Eve. And then our next adult ed class is on self-care, and that begins January 6th, 6.30, and that will be on Zoom. <sighs> wow, that was a lot of announcements. Oh, it's time for something different. <laughs> Me reading. <laughs> The Daily Word, one of my favorite things. For Sunday, November 29th, the word is faith. As Advent season begins, my thoughts turn to faith. I believe in my capacity to be hopeful, assured, and strengthened as I embark on this journey of faith. Faith keeps me open to discovering reasons to have hope, even when I do not yet see any evidence for my hopefulness. Faith gives me assurance that my indwelling dignity, divinity will lead me to accomplish all that I set out to achieve. Faith fortifies me with the necessary strength to transcend my limited human knowledge, allowing divine wisdom to guide my thoughts and actions. I believe in good things to come, and I believe in my ability to bring those things into manifestation. I am grateful for the gift of faith. And from Romans 15, verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our affirmation, and let me say it one time and then we'll say it together. My faith lights my path and guides my way. Together, my faith lights my path and guides my way. And now we'll have some more music by Brent and Patty.
It's a busy place out there. Complicated world we share. Working with no guarantees. I believe that what we need is what we need is brave faith. Brave faith. Let us love, let us live each day with brave. Sometimes we are slow to trust Wisdom hidden deep in us Fear of failure keeps us down What we all could use right now is Use right now is Brave faith, brave faith Let us love let us live each day with brave, brave faith, brave faith. Someday we can all look back, turning points along our path. That's when we will point with pride. Every good choice guided by, guided by brave faith, brave faith. Let us love, let us live each day with brave, brave faith, brave faith, brave faith. I hope you guys are clapping at home. That was a great song. Thank you guys so very much. That was fun and I was dancing. Were your toes tapping at least? Yeah, you know it. <sighs> okay, so picture, if you will, in your mind's eye, a young girl pregnant, recently married because of the pregnancy in the midst of a chaotic journey, not of her choosing. Politics has come into play and caused her life to be even more upset than finding out that she was pregnant. As a citizen subject to government policy, she and her husband must make a journey to the city of her husband's birth. You know, there was probably a great deal of unrest and maybe even some resentment in the land because everybody had to make this journey, uprooting, their lives. But Mary is always portrayed as the epitome of patience, riding on the donkey to Bethlehem with Joseph walking beside her, leading, holding the reins. But in reality, they were human, and as such, subject to human emotions. What might have they been thinking and feeling? Perhaps they too were just a tiny bit resentful about having to make this journey. Or perhaps they were able to greet each day and see the beauty around them, feel the joy in their hearts, taking this trip as an adventure. I'm pretty certain that they had not traveled much in their young lives. Maybe they were railing against the circumstances that led them down this road. Or maybe, just maybe, their faith was strong enough to know that God was present and greater than any circumstance in which they find themselves. Our journey through this past year, through the pandemic, through the election, and projecting into the up upcoming winter, has a few parallels with the Advent story. We're all traveling through it. It's not necessarily our idea to do so. We may feel resentful about the restrictions placed and not having the family gatherings we had in the past. We may certainly feel a sense of longing for those. 
We may feel like just giving up and sitting out the pandemic on the couch with a bowl of ice cream. Or maybe, just maybe, we're able to appreciate the sun shining, the moon glowing, the sparkle in the eyes above the mask of people you pass by. Perhaps we want to have the kind of faith that knows all is well. Perhaps we want to have the kind of faith that understands every moment that God is present within us, that the vaccines won't have any side effects. But maybe we can't seem to muster up the faith for any of that, and so adopt a rather laissez-faire attitude. What will be, will be, and what can I do about it anyway? My friends, faith is not passive. We have been given all the faith needed for any situation. It's our choice where we place that faith, in the gloom of days or the bloom of days. We consciously or unconsciously decide what we have faith in. Winifred Wilkinson Hausman, say that three times fast, wrote, faith is that quality in us which enables us to look past appearances of lack, limitation, or difficulty, to take hold of the divine idea and believe in it even though we do not see any evidence of it except in our mind. So faith, again, I'm going to say it, is not passive. We exercise our faith when we see the impossible as possible. We exercise our faith when we see God beneath the circumstances. We exercise our faith by looking beyond limitation to seeing the abundance of the universe, knowing the source is within us. If we want to play a more active role in creating our, a better life and a better world, then we train ourselves to see beneath the outer circumstances to the reality, with a capital R, of God ever present. And just as we need to exercise our body to maintain good health, we exercise our faith to strengthen the belief in possibilities. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, called faith the perceiving power of mind. What we see in our mind, we believe to be true. A child sees a Santa in the department store and believes they have seen the real Santa. They believe it to be true. But eventually, as the child grows, they begin to see beneath the fake beard and the wig, and they see a different reality. As we progress along our spiritual journey, we begin to see a different reality as well. Fillmore continues with his definition of faith, saying it is linked with the power to shape substance. Substance, of course, just as a reminder, is that which underlies all reality. We see it in our minds, we shape it into being. That is what exercising our faith, our power of faith, can do. Fillmore continues, faith is a force that draws to us our heart's desire right out of the invisible spiritual substance. It is a deeper inner knowing that that which is sought is already ours for the taking, the assurance of things hoped for. The trip to Bethlehem is not only helpful in navigating this tricky year, the pandemic, but it is also a beautiful metaphor for our spiritual journey through, the, through life. Mary and Joseph, symbolic of our thinking and feeling natures, are called in to make this journey together. 
it's not just an intellectual trip. It's not just one that the emotions take. Our hearts and our heads are married on this trip. They are in harmony. Mary and Joseph stepped away from their daily lives to make this trip. Even though it seems like it came from an outside force, the census, this trip, though, according to the scriptures, was made in order that a prophecy be fulfilled. And you, on your own personal spiritual journey, are fulfilling a destiny as well. Your soul's evolution is part of the universal invitation for an ever-expanding awareness of God, for a constantly growing recognition of who you are. And in case you have forgotten, let me remind you that you are an individual expression of the divine. God expresses through you as you, as your higher self. Colossians 1 puts it this way, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The word Christ comes from the Greek, and it means anointed one. Within you is that which is one with God, your true self, the anointed one. So how do we cultivate our faith in this, in the reality of our being? Well, really, it is one step at a time, keeping clear about a direction and pivoting back to it whenever our thoughts might lead us astray. When we think of the journey that Mary and Joseph took, what, what else comes to mind? Here's a hint. Donkey. <laughs> the donkey um, has a reputation for being stubborn. You may also picture in your mind pulling on the, on the reins and the donkey st refusing to budge and just kind of braying. However, I did not say praying, braying. <laughs> However, the donkey is also a symbol of perseverance, of humility, of courage, and endurance. Metaphysically, the donkey can be said to symbolize our physical body because when whoever is in the rider's seat is controlling what the body is doing. St. Francis of Assisi called his body brother ass, another name for donkey, because he recognized this. For our spiritual journey, we bring along every aspect of our being, not only our intellect, our emotions, but our body as well. We learn from each of these aspects. We know that we can choose to place our faith in our own efforts and probably stay stuck spinning our wheels. Or we can see and choose to use this power of faith, seeing truth instead of circumstances. Linda Martellowitz tells us our perception is so critical to our experience of reality that it would be wise for us to question our perception and to seek the greatest truth we can fathom as the basis for our viewpoint. Truth is the interconnectedness of all life and the order existing within all creation. So two things will support our faith. Seeing truth with a capital T, or God, whatever you want to say, underneath, underlying, in the midst of all circumstances, and then seeing possibilities, seeing the potential. A Course in Miracles Lesson 270 says, I will not use the body's eyes today. Now, I don't think that they're advocating putting blinders on or tying a scarf around your eyes. I think it's encouraging us to use our spiritual eyes to see beyond the circumstances. Martella Wetset continues, our ability to perceive ever more desirable possibilities is innate. It is within each of us, and it can be exercised. C. 
seen ever more desirable possibilities, seeing the impossible as a possibility. Ordinary people believe only in the possible. Extraordinary people visualize not what is possible or probable, but rather what is impossible. And by visualizing the impossible, they begin to see it as possible. So wrote Cherie Carter Scott. So dare to dream. Dare to see yourself accomplishing great things on, in your awakening, in, along your journey. Dare to see a world that works for all. Dare to see peace on earth. And in so doing, you move into faith, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We're going to have a, moment, a time of meditation now. So I invite you to get comfortable, adjusting your position if necessary. If you're at home watching this in bed, go ahead and lay down. That's fine. And let's begin by paying attention to our breath. Closing our eyes to close our mind from distractions that the sight might bring. Setting the intention to see with our inner eye spiritual perception. Letting go of all the worries that may be in the back of the mind, all the fears in the dark corner of your heart just release them as we become present to this moment. Acknowledging this great power of faith that we have within. It is innate. And now is the opportunity to exercise it as we breathe in, recognizing that we are one with God, as we exhale, recognizing we are one with all creation. Continue to breathe in oneness, breathe out oneness. I am one with God. I am one with all creation. As we move into a time of silence, know that it doesn't have to be a physical silence. It is an inner silence. Connecting to our higher self, to our anointed self. Allowing the glory of heaven to fill our being. I am one with God. I am one with all creation. In the silence. In the silence in the silence.
And as we bring our meditation time to a close, I invite you just to sit gently as Brett and Patty share another beautiful song with us. Chosen me now to carry your son. I am waiting in a song. Must I walk this path alone? Be with me now. Be with me now. Breath of heaven, hold me together. Do you wonder as you watch my face if a wiser one should have had my place? But I strong help me be help me breath of heaven hold me together be forever near me breath of heaven
Thank you so much. What a beautiful, beautiful song. And now if you'll join me in our offertory prayer together, joyfully I give from the abundance of divine supply that is manifest through me. I am a spiritual being living in a spiritual world under spiritual law and I am prosperous. I am grateful for every blessing in my life. Thank you, God. Now, more music. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Here we are as in olden days, happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Through the years we'll always be together If the fate allows Hang a shining star above the highest bough And have yourself a merry little Christmas now We're going to sing it again. <laughs> Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our Troubles will be miles away. Here we are as in golden days, happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Through the years we'll always be together. If the fates allow, hang a shining star above the highest bough, and have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Well, that's going to get you in the spirit of the season, I hope. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> we have an opportunity to share with this community our celebrations, our blessings, anything for which we're grateful. I invite you to place it in the comment section. Additionally, if you have a prayer request that you're comfortable in sharing with the community, please place that in the comment section on Facebook as well. I'm giving you a moment to do so. <laughs> and let's join together in prayer. Allowing gratitude to bubble forth from the deepest part of our being for being together, for faith that moves mountains, for this ministry. We take this gratitude and that positive energy and the vibration of love and we bless the tithes and the offerings that are even now coming to this ministry, allowing the work to continue 
for lives to be healed, for people to be empowered along their spiritual journey. And we say thank you, God, for all of this and so much more. We have such a deep appreciation for the blessings in our lives and for the individuals who brought those blessings about. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. And now, my friends, it's the end of our service, and we're going to sing our peace song. Um, and I, you should probably know this, and hopefully you can see it on the TV screen. If not, um, hum it. <laughs> um, let me move over here a little bit. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, family all are we. Let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Much love to you folks. I'll see you when I see you, hopefully soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>